Today we have a very special guest with us. He is a world famous Christian apologist and author. For more than 50 years, he has been involved with Campus Crusade, also known as Crew Ministries. He has addressed way over 25 million people and has given over 27,000 talks in 126 countries. He has spoken to more college kids and college campuses than anyone else in all of history. Since 1960, he has written and co-authored over 150 books in 128 languages. One of his most popular books in which I believe everyone has either heard of or read his book, More Than a Carpenter, which took him only 42 hours to write. More Than a Carpenter is one of the most read books in all of history. More than 200 million copies made. Another book of his that is very popular is Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And I'm so thankful that he wants truth and doesn't want us to go based off of feelings or emotions, but praise the Lord that he knows and teaches us that we have a ton of amazing evidence and trusted resources for us believers to be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in us. He is also a man that loves and leads his family very well. He not only loves his family well, but others. He is very passionate for the Lord as he knows that the Lord is very passionate for each one of us. It is my honor and privilege to welcome the one and only Dr. Josh McDowell. I just want to say thank you, Josh, for being here and uh, such a blessing to have you. Uh, I got saved back in 1982 and I remember the first time I heard you was at Oregon State University and you were with crew and you were speaking and I remember it was such an encouragement to me. I uh, it encouraged me to study the Bible and become a pastor for that. So I want to well, thank you. Well, that's great. Yeah, I want to thank we you. We used to that. call it, we called it Oregon Straight. Oregon Straight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's Oregon, though. I walked in, saw the audience, and I said, wow, are they different than you of oh, Oregon University? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, More conservative different. dress, nice, not dirty, anything. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, that was the old days. Uh, anyway, and I just want to say it was such a blessing. Oh, I've read your books, uh, More Than a Carpenter. When I got saved, my grandma made me read that. And didn't make me, but she gave it to me. And uh, Smart grandmother. <laughs> yep. And you wrote that. Didn't you write that in like, what, 42 hours or yeah. something? That's right, 42, 42 hours. <laughs> That's amazing. So you stayed up straight for that. You stayed mm -hmm. up the whole oh, yeah. time. That's amazing. Wow. And uh, that sold a few copies, hasn't it? <laughs> Well, it's about two hundred million. In circulation. Yeah. <laughs> I was hearing an author say I sold two million the other day, and how excited that was! I think two hundred million—that's pretty wild. But anyway, that's uh, also digital. That's digital, also. Okay, but I just want to say thank you so much for being with us, and you're kind of—I I think you hope this is a, but like a father in the faith, and that's mm -hmm. why we wanted to ask you because you're such a uh, just a pillar and just a mighty man of God in the sense of uh, just integrity and meeting your family, meeting your wife, and. And just the way you talk about her and hearing your son Josh talk and just uh, want to say thank Sean. you. I mean, Sean, I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> See, I Josh. messed up. But uh, I just want to say thank you so much for yeah. your faithful over 50 years of ministry and still have more wow, energy. Wow, I'm feeling old. <laughs> no, no, no. You have more energy, I think, than, than I do. I'm only 57, and I think you have more energy than me and look, look better than me. So that's good. <laughs> so anyway, so we have a few questions we'd like to ask you. So, Mariah, why don't you start off? All right. So the first question we have for you is, how would you respond to an unbeliever or someone questioning the faith who asks, why would a loving or good God allow the coronavirus? If I had plenty of time with that person, I would first share with them why I trust the scriptures, Amen. how I believe they're true, I believe they're historically accurate and reliable. Amen. Second, I would say, you need to understand creation. Mm. In the book of Romans, it tells us, let me read it. Therefore, just as one man's sin entered the world when Adam and Eve sinned, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And it goes on to say, even the creation is crying out for Amen. redemption. Amen. Which means this, when Adam and Eve went their own way and sinned. At that moment, all creation was affected by the sin. Mm. Yep. And not only sin entered the human race, sin entered the creation, mm. the universe and all. And with that came death, pain, disease, stress, exhaustion, mm -hmm. uh, calamity. 
and many of the bad things that we see. So first, you need to understand that, that sin affected the very creation. Creation fell along with Adam. But look at this way. One reason God did it was to bring about good. You say, what? Let me show you what I mean. Remember, the Lord allowed Joseph to be sold as a slavery, yep. into slavery by his brother. And they took him into slavery. That was horrible. That was evil. That was, that was sinful. Mm. But God meant it for good, he said. He later, he said, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to save many people. Now, what happened? Because he was sold into slavery and the wisdom God gave him, he became the leader of Egypt and a very powerful leader in Egypt. And when the famines hit, he was able to save his brothers from the famine so they didn't die and food. And that's when, um, you know, said to him, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for, for good. good. Amen. He brought good out of it. And also, when I look at the evil, someone shared these five things that really made sense to me. Okay. That through suffering, we learn to have compassion. Amen. Mm. Amen. I can honestly say through the COVID-19 pan pandemic, I really developed a greater passion mm. for other people that were going through it. Amen. And it just became a part of me. Uh, so much so that every morning when I get up, one of the first three things I do is I write 10 encouragement notes to 10 people. Mm. That's great. And then during the day, I either text message, email, or call, mainly internationally, 10 people to encourage them. Wow, that's great. Tell them that God loves them, I love them, and share some how meaningful they are. And then before I go to bed at night, I, rent, I write 10 more encouraging notes. Oh, that's great. Awesome. And that's something I learned to do coming out of this pandemic, yeah. to have compassion on others. Amen. Amen. That's good. And I think we learn through bad things happening around us, and sometimes it takes something like that to learn that we need to depend on others. Mm. Yeah. Let, me, let me show you what I mean. I've been isolated for almost two months. Wow. I am busier now than ever was yeah. before yep. uh, quarantine. Yep. Uh, we're reaching, I don't know how many millions every seven days are downloading our resources. I mean, this has never happened. Every That's minute, 280, 280 people every 60 seconds downloads our resources while I'm in, in uh, quarantine. Wow, that's awesome. And, but if I want to get something edited, I have to depend on Warren Joni Coleman, mm -hmm. two of my staff. Mm -hmm. If I want to get something typed, I have to depend on my secretary, Kim. If I want to get a, a PowerPoint developed, I need to depend on Jen. Mm. If I want to, almost everything I want to do, I have to depend on someone else. Yeah. Yeah. And remember in Exodus, I think it was Exodus, that Moses went out to, uh, he told Joshua, pick good men to lead the force. And he did that and went out in battle against the Amalekites. Mm. And Moses went up on this large hill or small mountain with his staff. And when he lifted his staff up, Amen. the Israelites were winning. Yep. When he put his staff down, the Amalekites started yep. to win. But after a while, his arms were so tired after hours, he could not lift his staff up. Yep. And the Israelites were losing. Yeah. Well, along came, oh, Aaron, Aaron and her, her, Aaron and her. Aaron and her. her and who else? Aaron. Aaron, Aaron and, her. and her came along. They rolled up a rock he could sit on. And then think of this. They stood on each side, and they lifted his arms Amen. up. That's Amen. awesome. Yeah. And the moment I read that in my devotions the other day, I thought, every one of us needs people to lift our arms yes. up. Yes. I've got so many of my staff who are working from their homes are lifting my arms up. Amen. to have ministry. Amen. And that's something I think you learn mm -hmm. through going difficult times. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's it. I really, Another, oh. 
I don't care what anyone says. When you go through hard times, it tests your faith in your love. Mm. Amen. Yep. I really, I really like what you said, Josh, how you said, you know, people say, all I need is Jesus, like struggling with pornography. All I need is Jesus. You said, mm. no, no, you need Jesus and the church. The- and, uh, you know, it's funny, in the last days, you know, uh, Hebrews 10, 25, the people are going to forsake fellowshipping with believers, yep. but we really need the body of Christ, Amen. really need the Aaron's and hers to yeah. encourage. And we need, like you said, find someone safe before you said another podcast, find someone safe that you can share your struggles with, or you can say, help me, I need help, you know? That's right. Yeah. The, way I, the way I state that with pornography yeah. is that, uh, and what I faced, I was homosexually raped for mm-hmm. seven years mm-hmm. from six to 13 mm-hmm. years old. And um, to win out over that, I needed more than Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And people say, what? <laughs> I mean, you ought to hear the nasty emails I get. Oh, wow. It's from pastors and believers who don't know their Bible. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, I need more than Jesus for most things in my life. Amen. Now, what I mean by that and what the Bible means, when it comes to my salvation, all I need is Jesus. Amen. 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 He paid the entire price. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't need Jesus plus works, Jesus plus the church or anything. Jesus paid the price for all. Amen. But almost everything after my salvation, I need more than Jesus. Mm-hmm. You say, what? Yeah. <laughs> I need the church. Amen. I need the body of Christ. Amen. Just like I shared sitting here, I need 10, 12, 15 of my staff for me to function in a healthy way to minister to people. I need others yeah. in the body of Christ. Amen. Um, but I would say during this, it's almost two months now I've been quarantined. Wow. <laughs> and in that, my faith has grown. Yep. I've had to trust Christ in areas that I just can't fix. <laughs> and I'm a fixer, yeah. and I'm an accomplisher. Yeah. Uh, every day I plan out what can I accomplish today, because if I accomplish something, I sleep better at night. Yep. Yep. And uh, my faith has grown. And, you know, I truly believe my love has grown through the pandemic. Yeah. Uh and my love for others in all, even the love for myself, which is supposed to come first. Uh, you love God, you love yourself, and then you love others. Yep. Everybody else said, no, you should love others. That's not biblical. No. Love no, others no. as you love yourself. Amen. Uh, love others as you love your own body. Exactly. Uh, and another, I believe going through something like this pandemic, any calamity, we, we learn to turn our lives over to God. Mm. Yeah. I think through this, I've learned through wisdom, I've learned what I can control in my life <laughs> and what I can't. Yeah. I'm yeah. a very high control person. <laughs> some people are some, I'm high control. Yeah. And when I don't have control, of control gets all the way. I get a little nervous, a little nauseated and all. And I really believe I've learned more of what I can control in my life and what I can't Mm -hmm. through going through the calamity of this pandemic. And it will end. The pandemic will end and we will go on. But I know I'm going to go on as a better person. Praise God. So that's how I would answer that. Amen. We love that. I always think, I always say this, Josh, is that I say to the congregation, if you can't share Christ now with your friends and family members in a pandemic, when can you? You know, when it's life and death. I mean, so this should be motivation because it really. I mean, Amer- I mean, I always say as a Christian, right, to live is Christ, to die is gain. We can't lose. But for someone who doesn't know Christ, think of the fear. I mean, you know that the stats, I mean, 40%, you know, people are just so fearful. I hear people are working in secular jobs are saying like uh, Whole Foods, so fearful. And we should be sharing the love of Jesus with those Amen. people because Amen. they're they're terrified. And I can't. I believe all of us should write letters of encouragement yep. to people yeah. Yeah. and call call our friends and all just to encourage them. And if, and if you're going through depression, loneliness, anxiety, if you're a woman, you have three or four friends. If you're a man, you're lucky to have one good friend you can yeah. dump on. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the best things you can do is call a friend and share what you're going through. Amen. And then listen to them. Yes. And probably they're going through the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you can minister to each other. Yes. And I love how you said that because 
what I love about your ministry is that you really train parents and grandparents and people to listen to their children, not mm -hmm. just preach at them, give them scripture, but to listen, let them feel comfortable coming to them. And that's the next question we want to ask you is about... Well, God gave us two ears and one mouth, yeah. <laughs> so I guess you're supposed to listen twice as much as you speak. Amen. Amen. Hey, and Josh, I want to ask ahead. this. Go ahead. What's the next question? We, Josh, will you be my friend? Because <laughs> Dottie's friends with my wife, you but could, you know, you and I didn't really could, hit it. You couldn't afford me. <laughs> yeah. <You> couldn't afford <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm a very needy friend. Oh, am I needy? Am I needy? Oh, bless you. Well, oh. we... Well, what we love about you is that you are so encouraging and we pray that we can encourage you because if you only knew how much you've touched my life mm. and just seeing your passion uh -huh. and joy for the Lord and just you being excited and passionate and it truly makes me want to be even that Aaron and her for you because you're doing so much and even when you talk about how you ran up a hill and you walk around the marina, I'm like, <laughs> I want to work out. I want to do more because it's, you just bring so much joy, and it truly is the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I just want to encourage you. I know that's how, a great verse. Yeah, and you are so busy, and we are so blessed that you can be here. But what we want to ask you is, yeah, but see, this morning I woke up, and when I saw you were going to be interviewing me, I yeah. said, "Oh Lord, what happened? Why couldn't I be as handsome as she is cute?" <laughs> <laughs> no, you. <laughs> and the Lord said, "But then, but then, you, I made Josh, you unique." But uh, Josh, you know, never try to be someone else because God created you to be you Amen. and me to be me. Hey, and if you're not you and I'm not me, who will be us? Amen. But Josh, then you saw me and you felt very encouraged. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I said, oh, thank you, Lord, that I have a friend like Craig. Amen. Well, I wore these pants in honor of you because I know that Whoa, you... Those are the kind of pants I'd wear. I yeah. know. That's why yeah. I wore them I for you because you inspire me with your dressing. And Josh, we want to say this. One pr podcast we saw, the guy said he remembered what you wore, no, but we remember so. what you wear and what you Amen. say. So both. Amen. Both. <laughs> But, um, okay, what's your next question? So the next question is, during these trying times of isolation, how should, should we spur one another on to stay away from temptations such as drugs, alcohol, pornography, which is a big one, and depression? One of the biggest things, say if somebody's going through pornography, mm. and I do this with a friend of mine every day now, because being in isolation, it, it feeds right into porn. Yeah. So every day I just call and say, how are you doing? Amen. And just listen. Just listen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's one minute. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then just pray and hang up. Amen. Uh, the best thing is just to ask someone, how are you doing? But then listen to them. Yep, mm -hmm. listen. If you don't get your two bits in, you don't get your two bits in. Mm -hmm. Just listen to them. Now I have to work at that hard because I'm a talker. Yeah. <laughs> And, Same here. But my wife, my wife has really helped me to develop the ability to listen. Amen. 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 And we love the verse that it talks about, um, James 5, 16, to confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. And I love how you say that. It's so freeing when you can just share <laughs> and have someone that can listen trust. without judging you or saying, I can't believe you. Because what was freeing for me growing up as a child is being able to know that my dad wasn't going to judge me or look down at me if I said, hey, dad, I was just looking at something I shouldn't. Or, hey, dad, I was even struggling with the even crazy things I don't even care about sharing of like masturbation, like for girls, like even crazy things. I'm like, I don't care if people know because it's like my dad was so real with me to be like, you tell me that and I don't care. Because for me as a kid, we were sheltered. We couldn't do this or that. So I didn't do the bad things, but it was all religious. I did those things, the thoughts I would think that. So I am thankful for you and how you speak up against pornography and how that is a big thing and teaching these parents. Cause I think that's why my dad is the way he is because of you, because mm. you have taught and trained these parents to not make their kid feel like, Hey, if you tell me, I can't believe you did that. Like truly to be open and say, Hey dad, I messed up and my dad, truly just listening to me and not feeling, and it's you so know, freeing. so I'm thankful for you. If every child grew up with that, mm. I'd be out of business. <laughs> there wouldn't be any ministry to young people. There wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, 
And you're right. This is so critical that every child needs a father, especially the father, whether you're a daughter or a son, that you can be authentic with, open with, and they'll be non-judgmental, won't start preaching to you. Well, don't you know what God says? You know, the Bible says, but they'll listen to you. Amen. Yes. And then gradually speak truth into your life. Oh, that's what I've tried. I've got three daughters and a son. And I made a lot of mistakes in parenting, but you know, I also did a lot of things right. Yes, you did. And uh, uh, I grew up in an incredible relationship with my children and they would come to me. I remember one time uh, I'm walking along and uh, my daughter said to me, they'd been discussing how many girls at the little school they went to got pregnant and all. Mm -hmm. And so I picked her up and we were walking across the uh, parking lot to the car and she said, daddy, if I got pregnant, what would you do? Mm. I said, honey, I don't care what journals would write about me in magazines. I don't care. People in our little church down here in the corner would say, yeah. Oh, he's telling everybody else where how to raise her kid and her own daughter got pregnant. And such. I said, that would make no difference. I said, I would put my arms around you and hug you. Mm-hmm. Mm and listen to you. Amen. And she dropped her books, right? She, all of her books, she yeah. dropped them right on the pavement, <laughs> threw her arms around me, and started crying. She says, Dad, I know that, but I just needed to hear you say it. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Amen. Amen. That's good. Wow. And then my son came to me once. They must have had a similar conversation in their <laughs> class. I'm not sure how old he was, but he said, Dad, if I got a girl pregnant, what would you do? Mm. And I told him the same thing. That's yep. good. Yep. I throw my arms around you and love you, and we would work it through together. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If every child, boy or girl, had a father like that, the yeah. world would be different. Oh yeah. Uh, yep. And that's why I spend so much time teaching in that area. Yeah. Hey Josh, yeah. can I ask you a question? I never had a father. My father left before I was born. Yeah. Was it you? Kind of had a rough patch with your dad. Your dad got saved. It was really neat. You, Praise but God. you had. Was it hard for you? Uh, to be a father, I mean, how did you do that? Because I found like I was so afraid to be a father because I never had one, and the God just said, "Then fo- you know, I'll lead you. Just follow me." But I was mm-hmm. like so afraid, yeah. like I didn't know what I had nothing to go back on. Yeah, I was so scared to get married because I didn't. The only model of marriage I had was my parents, mm-hmm. and it was a, a continuous battle. Yeah. And then I, I, I had such a fear of having children because mm-hmm. I didn't want kids to grow up in anything like what I grew up yeah. with an alcoholic father. And literally when he wasn't trying to kill my mother, I was trying to kill him literally. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, um, yep. uh, I grew up with a speech impediment, mm-hmm. uh, of fear. And once I came to Christ, I gained such confidence in Christ. Yeah. Some people call it arrogance, no, but no, I gained no. so much confidence. I overcome through Christ, my stutter. Wow. Oh, man, that's awesome. You, did, 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 you don't even hear me stutter. No. <laughs> but, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. Praise but God. what helped me uh, is several people in my life. One was a man by the name of Dick Day. Mm-hmm. He was in staff of crew going to Talbot Seminary, and I met him when I was a student there. He was a lot older than me. He's passed away now. And in many ways, he became a father figure to me, he became my best friend my best friend in the whole world, Dick Day. And I learned so much from him. And then second, a man by the name of Jim Simmons. Mm -hmm. I dated this one young lady. She was one of twins, so I felt that's good. If you miss out on one, you got a second chance. (laughs) How many people get a second chance? (laughs) You know, if if it didn't work out with Paul, I could turn to Leslie. But anyway, uh, and we dated three and a half years. And once I made a mistake telling her, I don't know who I love most, you or your dad. Oh. <laughs> but her hey, father, I would like that. Someone said her that. father, Jim Simpson. Oh, there's no one alive I admired more than Jim Simpson. Mm. And I watched how he raised his daughters. Whenever I went over there, I remember sitting in a little living room. He'd sit in the couch. I sit in his padded chair. And we would just share with the father. Yes. Oh, wow. He was there. And, and they'd always invite me to lunch. And I loved to go because not so much I could be with Paula, I could be with her father, Jim. That's good. Amen. And that really uh, helped me a lot. And then there were several other people like that. 
And so I learned how to parenting. I learned the seven A's of parenting, which I'm sure, Craig, you've heard me share many yeah. times, yeah. Uh, the seven A's. Uh, yeah. And I learned that through these different people I interacted with. And I got into scripture and say, wow, that's a principle, isn't it? And all came up with A's, and I didn't plan on that. <laughs> that's good. I did not. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. But uh, that's how I became a better dad, yeah. was watching others. Yeah, mm. I say plagiarizing others. Amen. And that's, again, what you said. We need the church. We need the yes. body of Christ. Well, and I told many, I want to be a Dick Day and a Jim, Simmon, Jim Simpson to other people. Amen. 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 I want other people to come to love their children more, be a better parent, mm. come to love Christ because I've come into their realm of friendship. Amen. And that's one of my desires. Amen. Amen. Well, sometimes I, it works, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's definitely worked for you because you've helped my dad yeah. be able to be a great dad yeah. to me without him ever having a dad. So yeah. I'm thankful. It makes me cry because just seeing you, you feel like a dad to me too. Just Oh, I wish I was there to give you a big hug. Uh, yeah. Well, hopefully we I'd can. Wear a mask. I'd wear someday. a mask. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we love you so much, and we, we know you're busy, so we better let you go because... Well, yeah. if you got another question, fire away. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So um, one of our questions, too, is we know that they say 40% of people are struggling with isolation and loneliness. So what would you say to that? Because I know that's a big thing. And we know you started a podcast, which is Resolution um, that's Movement, right. which we're excited about. And I want to show all the youth and bring them to that. But So what would you say with people struggling with isolation and loneliness? I read one. I'm basically a researcher. Mm. And one very reliable source, and was backed up by one other, that call centers mm. for hurts, you know, and depression yeah. and everything has gone up 500%. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's wow. huge. Yeah. Uh, and there are more people hurting now. But here's the thing mm -hmm. Almost anyone who is hurting now was hurting before they came into the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of made it. Because before the pandemic, two of the the top two of the top three epidemics in the world was loneliness and depression. Yeah. In every country, every culture, every yeah. continent, and what the isolation does, it it feeds into it. Yeah. And what I say to a person is. Go to my website, mm -hmm. josh.org Josh forward slash loneliness okay. or forward slash depression or forward slash anxiety or forward slash porn, mm. and I can really help you. Yes. Yeah. With Amen. many documents and steps and what the Bible says, how you can overcome it, everything. And one thing when you're lonely, Reach out to others. Yep. Mm -hmm. Call. I've already said this, I think. Call a friend mm -hmm. who you can, I call it, dump on. <laughs> and, and share with them, you know, I'm really feeling lonely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And share your feelings and let that person minister to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you'll find out is they're often feeling lonely too. Probably 70% yep. of the time your friend will say that. And you can minister to each other. Amen. And then... Think of how you can encourage others. Mm. Yep. How can you be meaningful in somebody else? For me, I write 20 notes a day of encouragement to people, and I make 10 phone calls or 10 emails uh, to people. I just sent yesterday, today's Tuesday, isn't it? Yes. Whatever it is. Yesterday, I sent 132 top Christian leaders around the world. I mean top of the totem poles. Mm -hmm. yeah. An encouragement email. Wow about going through this epidemic and everything. Yeah. This morning already, I've gotten scores of comments back within several hours. Oh, of, and almost every one of them, thank you, thank you for thinking of me. This was so encouraging to me. Yeah. And all that you would think of me. And I went, wow. Yeah. And how just a little note. And so, and what I did for them, I couldn't send them a note because I only had their emails, not their address. Mm -hmm. So I took a picture of me writing at my <laughs> desk over here in my, my office in my living room. Okay. And then I took a note and I wrote out very clearly that I was praying for them mm -hmm. through the virus and all and several things about them. And then 
in the top right of the email is a picture of me writing and the bottom left of the email is the note. Nice. And I have, an, uh, I have a little script there saying, I wanted to write you a personal note, but I had to do this email because I don't have your physical address. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. People yeah. didn't refer to the email. They referred to the note yeah. I wrote. Yeah. And so reach out to other people. How can you encourage them? Uh, to neighbors and all. Uh, those are two of the biggest things uh, you can do. Uh, in loneliness, and the other is get on a schedule. Yes. Yeah. You need a schedule for each day, yeah. and schedule in things that you can accomplish at the end of the day and look back and said, wow, yeah. I got this done, I got that done. My wife is going to bed sleeping so well at night because she's doing things in our bedroom or closets and all <laughs> that she dreamed, I mean, it was hard to walk into them. Now they're beautiful. <laughs> and I'm, I'm carrying up bags of stuff for Salvation Army or trash. Yeah, I bet I've taken out 20, 25 large sacks of everything wow. that I can't believe where it was hidden in our <laughs> master yeah. bedroom. Exactly. But accomplish something every day. And then, you see, I take it for granted. Number one, the umbrella over everything. Spend some time in Scripture. Amen. Spend some time in Scripture and prayer. Amen. It does, I, I don't spend... <laughs> I probably shouldn't share this, but I don't spend long times in prayer. Mm. I hardly ever do. Like everybody, I don't. But I pray all the time. Amen. Yep, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That's right. Yep. And so I learned that I'm a conscious attitude of prayer. So actually, I do pray long times. I pray 24-7. Yep. Amen. That's yep. great. I can't remember doing anything, no matter how trivial, that it wasn't a part of my consciousness of prayer. Yeah. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, if I'm going to walk, go out in the neighborhood, do this and that, then I need to walk with Christ. That means I need to listen to him and I need to talk to him Amen. and ask him. Exactly. And so I pray without ceasing Philippians. Yeah, exactly. Can we, I want, if you have a second, I'd like to ask you one more. I don't know if we really hit on this, but you know, they say, second is already gone by. But yeah, there you go. Sorry. A minute. How's that? But uh, they say that alcohol sales has gone up 50% in America. And you know, you talked about because you stuff. I went, I was from an alcoholic family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know the pain. What would you say to, because, you know, sadly, we've had Christians in our church admit they struggle with marijuana. We've had Christians admit, of course, pornography, mm -hmm. but they've also admitted like cocaine use. So, what would you say besides your website, because we know that's great, but what would you say to somebody? In this time of isolation, you've already said, get in the word, uh, go out to be, but what if it's something kind of scary, like you're struggling with drugs or alcohol and it's very shameful, even though. Hopefully what I would do is it's all, see, it would depend on how well you knew that person. Mm. If they were a perfect stranger, you'd say one thing. If you knew that person all, you would start sharing with them differently. But the number one thing is to find a meaningful question, ask it, and then just listen to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let them talk. Often I ask, well, tell me, Bob, wh why do you drink? Mm -hmm. Why do you, you're drinking a lot. Why do you do that? And just listen. I don't step in and say, well, you know, that's not good or this, or mm -hmm. don't you know what God says? No, just listen. And just that question when many people open up, incredible ministry opportunities and conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So the best is to ask a question or I sometimes see someone is, well, Bob, now if his name is David, you don't call him Bob, <laughs> but say, uh, uh, Bob, what are some of the implications of alcohol in your life? Is it affecting mm. your family, mm. your children, yep. your job, whatever? And let, and most of them have never thought of it. Yeah. Mm. And I, then I might say, well, what about your children? How's it affecting you with your children? And then always it comes to a part where the door will open, where I'll share my personal testimony about my father. I hardly ever knew him drunk. I mean sober. Mm -hmm. He drank all the time. He was a wino. Mm. Three, four, five bottles of wine every day. Wow. Mm -hmm. I used to hate that so much when I was a little kid. We're on the farm, and he would hide his bottles. 
And between milking that one cow and another cow, he would slip out. So I'd watch him. I probably shouldn't share this, but it happened. I would go find his bottles and urinate in them. Oh, wow. <laughs> I used to wow. I used to put bottles of my, my yeah. mom and grandma. I'd, I'd put water in them to kind of water yeah. it down. But I never I Well, never did I probably that. should have put water, but I <laughs> urinated in them. Yeah. And uh, because I despised him so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, Awesome. And he, he, he used to yell at me for doing that after mm. he became sober. How could you do that to a father? Yeah. I said, well, how could you do yeah, it to a son? son. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, share your testimony, yeah. and encourage them to get help. Yep. Mm. Alcoholic Anonymous really helped my father. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, in a big way, Alcoholic Anonymous did. And it ended up helping to bring him to Christ, too. They don't talk about Jesus. They talk about a supreme being. Yeah. And in my conversation, I said, well, Dad, that supreme being loves you, sent his son, Jesus, Amen. to die on the cross for you. Yeah. And I brought him to Christ. And one reason was because of Alcoholic Anonymous. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, Josh, we've taken up a lot of your time, and <laughs> yeah. we want to just say thank you so much. Well, you know, I needed the money, Craig. I needed the <laughs> we, we, Yeah, we'll pray for our offerings There's to go up. There's nothing to spend it on right now except food. <laughs> hey, hey, was there, I love any... you, too. i got to be going here. Yes. All right, well, can you but, pray for uh, us before you go? Yes, and if you ever get to Southern California near Dana Point where I live, I'm in the phone book. Yes. Right. No, I'm serious, and you don't have any money, no place to sleep, no food. Look me up and call me, and I'll pray for you. All right. Well, thank you. And, and my wife, Teresa. Yeah, yeah, pray yeah, you're praying for you. on the phone. Oh, I didn't okay. hear that. Hey, we have Dottie's number. So. We have Do Dottie likes my wife, so I think we might be able to, we might be able to come That's and right. see you guys. Let's anyway, pray. Let's yes. pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for technology that mm -hmm. even during times of quarantine and isolation, we can connect. It's not really relating, but it is connecting, Father. And I'm so thankful today. It, it makes my day to be able to connect uh, with this new brother and sister I've come to know in Christ. And I pray that you will use their lives to be a, a symbol, to be a model for others. That Craig will, in everything that he does and says, will influence yes, others to, become, to come to know you and to become good dads. Amen. And Father, through all of us, allow us to help others to have the ability to listen to their children mm. and to be there when they need them. And, uh, and not just do all the talking, but a lot of listening. Yes. Give us a good day today, and thank you for this, this uh, Skype hookup. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you God so bless. much, Josh, and God bless you. Thank you. Wow, what a blessing that we got to have Josh McDowell on our new podcast. What did yeah. you think? Oh, that was awesome. I mean, I like I said, I heard him back in 1982, 38 years ago, and uh, it was so awesome. He really encouraged me, and it was neat. I met him last year at in Israel mm -hmm. and got to have breakfast kind of with him, and his wife and my wife, Teresa, are friends, your mom, and so <laughs> it's really cool, and they were so gracious to us. It's so wild to meet kind of a Christian legend, a living legend, and uh, someone who's such a hero in the faith. It was awesome. I mean, yeah. I just, I was so amazed. This is our third podcast. Yeah. And he's willing to come on it. That was so yeah. cool. It definitely shows his heart that whether big or small, he does care about others. And I just love his passion for the Lord and how he's so joyful. And he has so much energy. It gives me energy. And I'm thankful that we got to talk about difficult subjects, which, yeah. which he says that a lot of people don't like to talk about it because they themselves are struggling, are struggling with yeah. it. So praise God that he is able to speak truth in light of all the craziness that's going on. And he tells us not to go based off our feelings, our emotions, but that there is evidence, there's true evidence that we can say, hey, this is why Jesus Christ Amen. is real, not just because I feel it, but it's, there's truth. And so you can find that on josh.org. He said that, but we can go to josh.org and see his resources and documents. Yes, and he has a ton. Loneliness, depression, yep. alcohol, pornography. And those are all huge issues. And like yep. we said, we've had people in our church, our church is kind of a small church, but we've had people who, you know, struggle with alcohol, definitely pornography, uh, drugs. Yep. And so we need to really 
not just assume because someone goes to church they don't have struggles yep and so we need to and like joshua like you said Listen. instead of preaching yep. so hard yes we need to be able to give an account like you said for the hope within us but we also need to make sure like they say people want to know how much you care before they know how much they care how much you know yeah and that's the key because a lot of times we just like to preach and kind of bomb mm -hmm. it on people what we think but really say hey what are you going through why like josh said why are you drinking? What do you think drinking's done? How do you think it affects your family? And like, let them come to the conclusion, this is bringing more pain to me than it is help. Yeah, yeah. and that's our prayer here at Calvary Conversations, right? Galatians six fourteen, that we don't boast about ourselves, that we, may we never boast about anything except for the cross of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And because of that cross, my interests in the world have died and the world's interests in me have died. So mm -hmm. I'm just thankful that we got to have that conversation with him and talk about how we want to die to the things of this world so that we can be alive in Christ. Amen. And how to do that is to listen to people, to encourage others, to reach out. The friendly have friends. And I'm just thankful that we got yeah. to talk to him and hopefully we can talk to him again. Yeah. In another we podcast. Scare you off, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. and, and the other verse I think is really good. Uh, I can't remember the address right now, but in Romans where it says the same spirit yep. that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. in you. And I really feel for people who are struggling with alcohol, with depression, with pornography, with loneliness, is here's the key, is you gotta die. To have resurrection, you gotta die. Yep. So we gotta get to the place where we're to the end of ourselves. We say, I can't do this anymore, God. I can't handle this pornography. I can't handle this alcohol. I can't handle this depression. So Lord, I die to myself that you might live. And I love the verse in Galatians 2.20. It says, I've been crucified with yes, Christ. Amen. It's no longer I who live, but Christ, Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh or this body, I live by faith in the Son of God. So we've got to die yep. to ourselves and our self-rule and self-will that we might truly live in the full power of God. Amen. So if that's you today and you have a sin or something that is really weighing you down, just like we talked about in James 5.16, to confess your sins to one another so that you might be healed, so if you have something that's weighing you down and you need to share it with someone, you can share it with any of us here at Calvary or Valley or the church. And we would love to pray for you, but also just listen to you. And we're just so thankful that you could join us on Calvary Conversations. We're praying that you can like and subscribe and share this video. And we also pray that we can see you next week, next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Thanks so much and God bless. Bless you guys. Love Bye. You.